Now here's some of the finest riders in the world on the starting line, the 500cc class. Mike had to be a neutral for the start. I don't think they do that anymore, do they? No, this is the European of Sweden. Here's four someone times who, this a world is uh, a graduate engineer. On a Husky, he was the number... Joel Robert of Belgium, champion. the glamour boy of the sport, Robert. a national Jesus. idol in his native land. There's Roger 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 Foster, Foster. Young, <laughs> puppy. on the heels of <laughs> Also the top American, uh, Gary, Gary, Conrad. Gary Conrad of Palmdale, California. Fast Eddie Mulder. Fast Eddie Mulder and and bewhiskered Eddie Mulder of Burbank. Eddie yeah. making those last minute funny. checks. Later in the here, interviews, the way, you weren't used to riding that small right bike. Now, it's like a 500 gram <laughs> <laughs> small bike. Like Probably twice the weight of the CZ. Yeah, we were used to the, to the 650 times. In a minute. So this was the the start of the 500 race, which was the the you know the premier event at the time. The grand, it was a grand event. I'm not sure. I can't recall. The, they ride 250s as well, the Europeans that year? Or they yeah, they, they rode 250s on Saturday and 500s on Sunday. Those yellow shirts you saw going out in front are the Belgian team riders. And behind them is a couple of cream-colored shirts, if you're watching in color, that are the Swedish team riders. The foreigners have gotten off to a very good beginning here in this race. The leader is Joël Robert of Belgium. Not too surprising, because he always goes for broke, this guy. One of the best in the world, although he's lost out in the world championship the last two years. He actually had a chopper in the air for shooting this stuff, huh? Yeah, we had uh, our usual guys for shooting that with Davy Jones, the pilot, and uh, Nelson Tyler was the, the cameraman, and he uh, he's the guy that invented the vibrationless camera mount. And at the time, was one of the few guys that could really uh, make it work mm. really well. I kind of kept it watered, kept the course watered and stuff. There's the rock that the Europeans did. Probably everybody was a little leery of because he came so close to it. So I think this is the first round of the 500 class? Yeah. I believe. Yeah, I think uh, but Robert's got, got a pretty good lead. Yeah. You know, the, the <clears throat> what I was amazed is the physical condition that they were in at that time. You know, I mean, the Americans, you know, I was one of the big guns, and we partied as hard as we rode, you know, and, <laughs> and that just, they didn't do that, you know, I mean, they were, they were, you know, they were paid guns at those times, they were, they were very much professional, more professional and more, more buttoned up than the Americans were at that time, I think, and then after, after we once got used to, and seen what they did, and how much more they were better than us at that point in time, I believe the Americans came back after them, and, and pretty well handled them for a while, didn't they? Yeah, and they were, you know, they were highly paid for the time exactly. afterwards, you know. And, exactly. Uh, I think you made the classic uh, statement one time. You <laughs> said, that, I'd like to see these guys go in the party circuit with me for a couple <laughs> yeah. weeks, then see how well they exactly. do. Exactly, I'll handle them, yeah. <laughs> but they were good, you know, you can't take that away from them. They're, they're very much professional. They were, you know, my term is a hired gun, and they, they, they did the job well. That's a downhill that we were talking about. And that was, uh, you know, this was really, it was before motocross in the, the U.S., but it was sort of, this was sort of the beginning of it. Exactly. This yeah. is actually what, I believe, that we went out and made some motocrosses. The Europeans did shortly after Hopetown when, when they were out here for that first visit. I think that we went up to Gorman and made a motocross course and had a motocross race with them giving us once again another lesson. Yeah. What well, was amazing, the Americans only took them, what, 10 or 15 years to catch up. Yeah. yeah. And then they, you know, and then they dominated. Yeah. I think Brad Lack, was Brad Lackley the first one to be oh, world champion, yeah. maybe, or something? And then it, you know, that turned around, I mean, like now, I mean, if you look at Carmichael and those guys, I mean, it's, you know, the motorcycles have been so much, you know. You know, in fact, if you turn around and think about it, you know, little Carmichael's riding for about five times world champion, Roger DeCosta, I believe. And here are the Americans. That's Eddie Mulder you saw. Just go out of your picture. Gary Conrad. But I think Dick Mann made the classic statement. He said, it doesn't really much matter 
how much travel you have, you're just going faster with more travel. It just means you have further to walk back to get your bike when you unload. <laughs> Meaning you're still at the limit of whatever the bike can do anyway. Here's uh, Jim talking to uh, Joel Robert. What is the most important talent for motocross? Is it balance? What, what would it be? I don't know exactly, but I can tell you one thing. That uh, when you are young, you should be a good rider and you become better and better. But you, if you start, uh, I don't know, 17, 18 years old, and you try making practicing, many practicing, and you never come better, I think better to stop, you know. Is motocross more dangerous than track racing, than course racing? I don't think so, no. I think uh, road racing is more dangerous because on the motocross, when we fall off, we fall off uh, 20, 30 miles an hour. But on the road racing, they can fall off under 120 miles an hour. No, that's the difference. Well, I don't know what Joel Robert considers fast, but look at him go right now out on that race course, being chased by Torsten Hallman. These two men who are contrasting in their styles of riding a bike and also in their personalities. Robert, flamboyant, uh, volatile, easy to explode, and taking chances all the time. Torsten Hallman, entirely different, a quiet man off the race course, a little more prudent in his racing. Bear heading into the third lap now, and Foreman right behind him. About the time the mud hole started to dry out, they had a big fire hose there, they'd fill it up again. So yeah. from, from lap to lap, you never <laughs> quite knew what it was gonna be like when you, you know, when you got there. All the spectators. I mean, there was thousands and thousands of people. And I don't know if they allowed overnight camping there. I don't recall. Do you? No. It goes running. Or actually, Dusty Coppage and Gary Conrad. Some of these fellows uh, coming through here now are Dusty Coppage and Gary Conrad, Ron Nelson, along with Oli Peterson of Sweden. You saw go through there. Steve Hurd, Chuck Miner, Old Bud Eakins is uh, in this group, and bringing up the rear here is Russ Robinson. Bud Eakins, whom we mentioned in Southern California here, is known as kind of the granddaddy of all motorcycle riders. And here's what it feels like, kind of like a dream or a nightmare. Dropped out of the race. There you are, you were just old enough to throw a <laughs> whisker. Something as simple as a flat tire? That's enough, yeah. That's uh, all it takes. Huh? I don't think it'd make any difference, though. They're world champions. Eddie, however, I, I know that in the past you've been laps ahead of your competition here, and you are not beating the Europeans today, but you were sticking very, very close to them until you had to drop out there. Uh, yes, I'm not riding the same motorcycle I usually ride. I'm not used to riding a smaller bike at all. What is it that makes these Europeans so good? Is there any one thing or many things? Uh, their physical shape and also their equipment. Their equipment is, uh, the suspension is 50% better than ours ever thought about being. The suspension is? The suspension, it. yeah. Having run well with these fellas, do you have any thought that you might like to go to Europe and race against them on their own terrain? Oh, definitely, on one of their uh, motorcycles. I'd like to uh, race them here on one of their motorcycles, but I can't seem to get one. Good luck to you, Eddie. Thank you very much. You were saying that, that they loaned you a CZ one night and went down to Ascot and blew everybody away in a, on a short track? Yeah, what happens, they had a... We have word that Robert's in trouble. There he is, there. pulling off the course. That's the leader out of the race. Cliff Coleman and Bud Eakins told me I was a chicken. You know what, if I didn't go over and grab one of the motorcycles and went over and grabbed one of them and lined up with them and spanked them pretty well at the TT track at Ascot and got a standing ovation. That gives the lead to the world champion, Torsten Holman of Sweden, whom you see right now, lapping a slower bike. Supposedly I was gonna have a CZ for Hope Town and the motorcycle disappeared after that, so. Uh-huh. They didn't speak too highly of it. <laughs> so that was the night before Hope Town? The night before Hope Town, yeah. Okay. 
taking a look back into second place where Dave Vickers is now. And look what's happened. Chasing after Dave Vickers. And uh, we'll get a look at him in a moment. Chasing after Vickers is Gary Conrad of the United States, a young Californian, giving a tremendous account of himself. Here he is chasing Vickers right now and trying to take over second. The motor, you know, I did have the honor of, of, of end up riding one for CZ out here for about a year or two. And they were, you know, at that point in time, they were, they were a great motorcycle. Well, they still are, but, you know, the 21 inch front wheel and, and the power band that they had at least it was amazing. The typical motorcycle band, too, they'd all be by the mud hole and leap in the mud <laughs> yeah. to help, you know, help the guy get unstuck. <laughs> and as the day went on, it got sloppier and worse and worse, you know, and they just kept, like you say, feeding it full of water. It's too bad we don't have anything like this anymore to my, you know, I mean, it was a great, a great event. And it just seems like we don't, we don't have the, the grounds left to do something like this anymore. I believe the dirt diggers that you see. Yeah, dirt diggers, that's right. Put it on, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We're on the final lap of the International Cross Country Motorcycle Championship in California. The leader, Torsten Holm of Sweden. But look at this. In second place, Gary Conrad of the United States. What a surprise that is. He's ahead of Roger de Costa here of Belgium and of Dave Vickers of England, who was second but was off the course. And, and you saw right here getting back on the course. You know, Hopetown was, seemed like it was. Uh, Kind of the cat's meow. I mean, it was everybody looked forward to it, and it was like a yeah, it was like a function. Everybody planned it a year ahead of time and and stayed at it, you know. There's the checkered flag for Hallman. I think Conrad might have been the <clears throat> the first American, wouldn't he? I Maybe. think you. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, no. Here. Okay. Here's Conrad the is second. There is the coaster taking and third. Husky, yeah. This is the world champion in the 250cc class, Torsten Holman of Sweden. Torsten, what is your opinion of this course here? Do you like it? Uh, I like it, but uh, it's a uh, lot of rocks, and it's uh, very easy to, to uh, damage your foot, or you, make, you, you can hurt yourself very easy. How big a sport is motocross in Sweden? Uh, not so big in Sweden, but uh, down in Belgium and France and Holland, it's very big, one of the biggest sports. Uh, together with football and uh, bicycling. I understand you've raced also in Eastern Europe, in the Soviet Union, have oh, you? Oh, yes, yeah, many, many times in, in Russia and Czechoslovakia and uh, East Germany. Poland. How good are the, the Russian and Polish, for example, oh, and East German riders? Very good, very, very good. Is it one of the major sports there, one of the big sports? Uh, yes, it is, yes, it, it's a big sport. How yeah. many people might they get in Czechoslovakia or somewhere for a race? Uh, in Czechoslovakia this year, they have 70,000. Is Back that right? Next, yeah. Torsten, I know you're tired. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The day before, this was a Saturday race. It was the 250s. We're just going to show some little highlights. There's Dave Bickers, a British, British guy, also on a CZ. And, uh, and uh, Hockey Johnson. He was fast. They said he was the fastest one all of them, but he had got hurt real bad, and that was the end of his career, I believe. I think yeah. he came back, I think, more than that. Uh, Gary Conrad. Conrad. Right for Nick Nicholson, Greens dealer. Yeah. There's the coster with, yeah. the, with the... A little half helmet. CZ. <laughs> it's like every kid in, every kid in <laughs> California was... Getting ready to go to school on their bicycle, <laughs> yeah. doing doing the salute, doing, doing the thing. Yeah. See, they had three or four. Two legs. I remember uh, uh, Kim Kimball, who was the Montessa, the Montessa distributor. <laughs> Ouch. Montessa distributor ran into a deer. Get a deer on the on the yeah on the back straightaway, on the high speed straightaway. Yeah. And hurt himself. Yeah, he's never been. Quite big one in the sense, yeah. Pretty good helmet check. Headed for the mud. So, I mean, look at these motorcycles, you know, the way they go from the bumps compared to what the, the CZs and the Huskies had. Yeah. And the big old iron horses. That's, you know, we got, I think we need to thank them for coming over here and, and opening our eyes to, you know, to the up and coming stuff. And, I think Bud was actually the one that started the 
22 inch or 21 inch front wheels as Uncle Bud after he went there the first time. Oh, he was? Yeah, I think did, so. Did the Triumphs like the other ones have 21 inch wheels? Yeah, they didn't come with 21 inch wheels, they came with 19s and Bud started lacing some up and then everybody started running. Oh, okay. Oh. Started running the 21 inch front wheels. <laughs> Thank God for hay bales, huh? I think that might be the other guy, Whitey Martinez, at that time. Whitey Martinez, maybe? Right? Uh, no. Oh, maybe, maybe. I think it is. He was stuck in his head. Cut it up. He was a checker. Yeah. Another yeah. checker. Another checker. <laughs> Good. Good well, that yeah, wasn't good, no. was it? Yeah, no. Look at these guys. And here comes Dave Vickers, who's been having plenty of problems out there today. I talked to Dave before the race began. Dave, uh, is this your first time in the States racing? Yes, it's the first time in the States. What are your impressions here so far of the racing and of the place? Oh, I like the place. It seems rather big to what we're used to. Yeah. We've been tra traveling for days, you know. We're not used to that in England. Yeah. And the tracks are pretty good. A bit dusty, but uh, pretty good. What do you think of the course here? Is it a good course or a dangerous course? Or well, a good one, I should say, it's a little bit dangerous. Why? There's around a lot of dust and rocks. And if you've got the dust, you can't see where you're going. What is the greatest excitement, the greatest thrill about riding a motorbike and participating in this kind of sport? Oh, that's, that's difficult to say, really. I think the finish of a big race, you know, and you can go back and have a Coke. Yeah. And you're the winner, huh? Yeah, if you've got to be the winner. That's difficult sometimes. That's the top of the back straightaway. I remember the yeah, just after the start. Yeah, that was exactly. like the first quarter, yeah. Top of like a 100 mile an hour trail and then off camera yeah, right hand off. corner. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is before set. I don't even know if the Europeans had the new style leathers that we motocross stuff. See, I believe they even have leather bottoms on in them days, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, leather, yeah, just a, before the nylon stuff came. Yeah, in. just a jersey. Yeah. And I believe oh, Torsten yeah. Holman made leggings gear. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. he's yeah. the one that originated it, I think. And That's right. Joel Robert, and there he is, from Belgium and the CZ team. Torsten Hallman of the Husqvarna team was second, and Ole Peterson, also of Sweden, was third. There are two races, what we know now called motos, and then it was the aggregate uh, placing of the two that right. determined the winner. So we had like, a, you know, if you got a first and a third to the guys, first and a fourth, and first and a third would, would win it. Right. Joel. Here is the winner. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Is this course a difficult one? Uh, it's not very difficult, but it's very quick. Very quick course. Uh, many rocks. I don't like that ro course. You don't like the course? No. Is it, is it dangerous? Is it more dangerous than uh, the courses in Europe? Yeah, enough part of the track is more dangerous than we have in Europe because there are too many rocks, you know. Yes. And, uh, and fast. Much dust, you know, and we go fast. We can't say nothing if we follow somebody. Where is the most dangerous curve on the course? I think it's the too dangerous. Uh, I think it's one on the other side. We take this uh, band, um, nearly, I don't know, in third gear, flat out. You know? Yes. We go very quick, and there's a big rock inside, you know. Yeah. I think the helmet passed near one or two inch between the rock and the helmet. Right. Well, congratulations to you, Joel. Thank you very much. This is William Charles Bryce, M.D., of Chino, California. Doctor, what in the world are you doing in this sport? Having fun. This is the most fun sport I've ever found. How in the world did you and medicine and motorbike racing all get together in one career? Well, my son, who's now in Vietnam, started on a small bike, and uh, we gradually moved up further bikes playing in the dirt and got into the racing aspect of it. And there's nothing quite like it. Is this a pretty dangerous sport for a fellow who needs all his facilities like you do? I don't think it's any more dangerous than the snow skiing or water skiing or any of the other quite active sports. It's a great challenge. It's a great physical challenge, and, and it uh, frees you emotionally when you get on that desert. You have all your faculties busy, and if they're not busy enough, you just turn the throttle a little higher, and then you are busy. 
Have okay. you ever tried to turn psychiatrist while you're out there and try to figure out exactly and specifically what is the appeal? That's when I turn the throttle higher. I don't even want to find out what the appeal is. <laughs> it would ruin it, I think. This was the... This is a powder puff. You know who that is girl. right there is actually right there is Lynn Wilson. Yeah, Lynn Wilson. And the last home I owned, I bought from Lynn Wilson. That's Betty Price, that one there in the forehand. My my uh, son Wade wrote the music for this sequence and he thought it was he he loved this thing with the with the ladies and their flowers. He thought it was powder, a what were they called? The, the Desert Daisies Desert or something? Daisies. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Like the uh, you know, he said just so typical nineteen sixties, you know. the checkered flag for Sandy Terman, the winner of the race with a quick backward glance. Second place going to Terry Lynn Bryce. Here is the winner, Sandy Terman. You want to take off that hot helmet, Sandy? Oh, I think I'll leave it on. It looks such a mess. Huh? I think I better leave it on. You I do, might scare huh? you. You mean your hair is a mess now? Yes. I didn't know you cared about that in the middle of a race. Sandy, how often have you raced on this kind of a course? Oh, uh, this kind of course I've never been on. Well, what kind of adventures did used, you find out there? It was uh, really great. I really learned a lot. It was well, a good course. What did you learn? Any particular difficulties? Uh, not really. Going through the mud was a little different. Uh -huh. I'd never been through that before. Now, of course, you stayed out of trouble pretty much. You didn't get as muddy as some of the other girls who were in the back of the pack there. Well, <laughs> I guess I was just lucky. Went through the right spots. You drove a very good race. Congratulations, Thank Sandy. Thank you. The girls seem to really have a good time. I mean, they always had a smile yeah. on their face. Yeah. Here's a sidecar. Sidecar guys were nuts. Yeah, big time. Yeah, nuts, <laughs> man. Uh, well, it's uh, very tricky, of course. Uh, it's a combination of uh, rider and passenger. Uh, one could do nothing without the other. It's strictly a teamwork thing. In other words, if you just rode this bike without anybody on there, you'd uh, tip over? Is it as simple as that? Uh, very simple like that. I wouldn't get very far without him, believe me. What's the difference between riding this cycle in the way that you ride it and drive it and riding a racing cycle, single? Uh, well, uh, handling is completely different. Everything is just exactly opposite of a solo rider. And uh, like I said before, you can't really do anything without the passenger. He's, uh, he's like a monkey in a cage over there trying to get out. <laughs> well, let's talk to this particular one, partner Joe Gardner over here. Joe, what do you do? Could you illustrate a uh, to uh, us well, some of the movements you do and so forth? Well, to make a right turn or a right of any degree, I get out in this fashion, go out over the fender, drop down to keep the weight of the hack, the center of gravity, down close to the ground in order to keep the hack wheel on the ground. Because when you start coming up, you're out, of, you're in trouble. How do you make a left turn? Well, I just lay across the back of the bike in this fashion here and hold on the best I can. OK, it looks like pretty dangerous work to me. It's fun. Well, I think the sidecars had a little bit of it, everything as far as the, the bikes and the motors and, yeah. and There's, uh, whatever. Guy named Jim, Jim Stevens. The man the sidecar is beat you to death. Oh, that looks like a few too many. <laughs> Look at all of them. I mean, that's like, whoa. You know, this is before the day of the of the bleeding axle on a sidecar that makes them turn and stuff. They just they were just hanging out. Look at that.
you know, the sidecar boost probably had to weigh, I figured the motorcycle alone, 650, a GSA Triumph or Norton, whatever it was, was 300 and something. So, oops, thing had to weigh close to 400 pounds. Uh huh. Probably, maybe 450 pounds. Yeah, I've never, never ridden one, but I mean, it's got to be weird because you want to lean over, but I've I ridden think you got to just turn the wheel. <laughs> it, it's a whole different thing. I've ridden a few and did a few movies with them, and it's a, it's a different deal, I tell you. I think I had the side on the opposite side. Yeah. You? infamous bush. <laughs> I wonder if that bush had a name. <laughs> sure claimed a lot of victims. Look at that guy. Think he stood here all day or helped these one guys and get the hell out of there. Huh? <laughs> Good guy laying out to make the thing turn. Jim LeBlanc and his passenger, John Burrs. Congratulations, Jim. Thank you very much. You can see without those, I take it. Yeah. <laughs> Just want to Barely. get the sun out of your eyes. What was the ride like? Did you have any incidents? No, rough. It was a bit rough, but uh, it was all right. John, I have to ask you, whatever gave you the idea that this is a good idea? I don't know. I really couldn't tell you. You really enjoy it? I do. It's a lot of fun. Congratulations to you both. Jim Thank LeBlanc, you very much. John Burns. Here's Steve Foss, who was riding passenger on the second place bike here. Steve, what happened to you? Are I you got what wet. Your face looks like? Well, I can imagine if it looks like the rest of me. Yeah, you're about the dirtiest man I've ever seen, if you don't mind my saying so right now. Where did you pick up most of this, do you know? It all came from that uh, deep uh, mud hole. Uh huh. Did you actually go down into mud one time or what? No, but with the left hand sidecar, the right hand ones throw the mud at you. Uh huh. You're all in one piece, nothing scratched, nothing hurt. No, I lost a glove someplace, and my goggles are dirty, but other than that, I'm all right. A little you tired. You consider this a pleasant afternoon, then? I am having a hell of a good time. And there he is, right Bruce there. Bruce Brown, God, the young man who made no. a remarkably successful <laughs> that, that great? the endless summer about surfing. Bruce, I understand a lot of the fellows in the sport of surfing are now taking to this one. Is that right? That's right. It, it, surprisingly enough, it's a very similar kind of sport. The, the sort of body English and the feeling of riding and the turns are very similar to surfing. Is that right? Particularly in this motocross, you mean? Or? In the, any kind of the cross-country racing where you're going between rocks and around trees and things like that. It's very similar to the feeling you get going up and down on a wave going down the little hills and stuff. Did you ever try it yourself? Yeah, I've raced, I come in about last or next to last, depending on how many people break down in desert racing, but not this. I wouldn't get in this thing for a $1,000. How about the emotional appeal? Is it kind of the same as surfing, do you think? Or is it a different? Yeah, it's a different feeling. It's kind of a more of a fight type thing, where surfing's a more free, uh, sort of a more pleasant feeling. This is kind of a, Arr, you know, and you're going to yeah. get them or something. But it's a similar, it's satisfying. Surfing is a little more getting away from things, is it? And this is getting more involved in things? Yeah, and it's quiet, and it's a different uh, different mood, but yet it's similar in many ways. Interesting. I might point out, by the way, that Bruce is also the director of our show here today, which marks another first for Wide World of Sports. The first time I interviewed our director, and I'm sure they'll all want to be interviewed from now on. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you, Jim. Here in the pits at Simi Valley, California, the racers are preparing their bikes, getting a new pair of shoelaces, getting all set for the final heat in the big 500cc class, which will be the climax of this meeting here. This will be the second 45-minute moto of the 500s. I don't even call them moto then, but uh, the Europeans versus the Americans. Roger de Coster in the CD. <laughs> Look at their goofy little helmets. Eddie Motor smoking a cigarette or something. Guys giving me last minute instructions. Pretty exciting when all those bikes came thundering around that, that first first sweep. 
The leader is Torsten Holman of Sweden, the world champion. In second place right now is Aki Josen on bike number E. He's another Swede. In third place, to Coaster on bike number C. He is a uh, Belgian. But Eddie Mulder is fourth, and Gary Conrad is sixth right now. Two Americans right up there with that first group. Took the bike. There's a guy. <laughs> He's on in pursuit. <laughs> the pins are down and gone. One fourth. There you go. Yeah. There goes Copy to Gary Conrad. So it is Holman, the leader. Second place in the yellow shirt, if you're watching in color. It's a coaster of Belgium. Third place is Josen of Sweden. Eddie Mulder in the United States is still fourth. And Gary Conrad is still sixth. In between them is Dave Vickers of England. Okay, Torsten off to a pretty good lead, huh? Yeah. That was a tricky little section up through the powdered dust. Yeah, then that real sandy spot just yeah. before that the bush or the tree, that would kind of take everybody you know, up. Everybody can say what, you know, whatever. They were, they were good motorcycle riders, boy. Yeah. You know? This was fast, too, down underneath the trees, into the water hole, mm -hmm. real fast. He's after him here, huh? Uh, who's that in second place? That's uh, uh, the Bears. Huh? Look how close they are now. That's first and second. Allman and the coaster of Belgium. He was actually CZ's number one guy, what Robert was at that point in time, wasn't he? Yeah, Robert and then the De Coster, I think, you know, yeah. the other two guys. I think Dave Bickers was the, Dave Bickers. Yeah, he was the yeah. other guy. Yeah. That's a fast trailer right there, up, up to the top. Mm -hmm. and that off camera right. Right here. It's my nice shot. Gonna hunt him down. The little shiny marks on that rock right there on the edge. <laughs> A battle for third going on, and then you have Eddie Mulder of the United States in fifth position, and Eddie's still got a pretty good shot at placing well in this final heat. They could slide the motorcycles pretty good, these guys, too, you know that? Yeah, and that wasn't really their uh their cup their of bag, tea now. You know? yeah. Of course the bikes were probably fifty pounds lighter than anything. Yeah, and the horsepower was amazing. But, you know. It's a tremendous race, three separate races really, for first, for third, and for fifth. There's an interesting problem numerically here. Torsten Hallman has the lead, and he can even finish second and still win the overall championship on a total point basis. In other words, as the coaster tries to close in on him. Roger must realize that he must win the race and that Holman must fall back at least to third place in order for DeCoster to have a chance at a win or even a tie. Man. You know, the speed, this place is pretty fast in places, as you know, Bruce, and the speed, I remember them saying that they had a hard time with the speed at first, but it didn't take them long to free will hand us our ass, you know? <laughs> they, they kept care of us pretty well. Yeah, you guys were used to 100 miles an hour across the desert. <laughs> yeah. They were kind of more 30 miles an hour through a really rough uh, motocross course. Yeah, they were amazing. Yeah. And their motorcycles were so updated compared to the stuff we had. You know, we had, what we have? We had the, the uh, DKWs and the Greaves and you know, we were a few years behind as far as technology, I think, with their equipment. Yeah, and mostly, you know, big, big four strokes, too. The, the two strokes here were kind of new. Yeah. Here they are headed for lap six now of this seven lap race. And there's a straightaway coming up. Let's see what the coaster can do. Look at the crowd, and there's no, <clears throat> what's pretty cool in them days, there was, you know, no crowd control, but the people didn't try to run around and be, you know, they respected what the, what the right. guys were out there were doing. Right. He's going after he him, wow. and he's got it, literally almost as if he were standing still. 
Bill Beer broke. Yeah. Uh-oh. Palm has got a flat. Who is that then? Is that uh, DeCoster? Is that DeCoster? Yeah. 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 He did really well, obviously. Yeah, the, he was like the rookie guy, I'm yeah, pretty sure, on the yeah. team. He went on to be a multi-time world champion. And right now there is Vickers trying to take Holman, and he does. I think, uh, uh, I think Vickers became a, a stunt, stunt guy in England, you yeah. know, with the, organized like the stunts for the cars jumping from roof to roof in the James Bond movie, stuff like Good that. For him. I got to think about some of the bumps. Yeah. See, and I don't think that at that time the Americans not have stood up. You know, we pretty much just sat in the saddle and, and rode the motorcycle. Yeah, amazingly smooth, the arcade. Yeah. yeah. Here he comes. Roger de Costa has won this final heat. Second place to Dave Vickers of England. Teammates on the CZ team. Congratulating each other. Here's Holman third, so it's going to be 12 points apiece. Roger. It looks like you're a tie at the moment, doesn't it? A no. first and a third for uh, each other? Very bad. Yeah. You hurt? Last week I hurt my shoulder. It was a little dislocated, and so I must take medicine, and I finished. That was a great race. Did you have trouble with your bike, Torsten? No, uh, the rear wheel. The rear off. wheel. Yeah. Well, now, you're tie, are you not, with Roger? Well, you each have a first and a third. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, the overall time. But right. I, I don't know. I'm so not... we'll know in a minute. Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay, here's the winner. Fastest time. He's got the winner. Is that right? Right. You sure? Right, right. We just got it. Roger, we just get the word that you have the fastest time. You're the winner of the race. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And now hold everything. Here comes a correction from the judges. They have changed it and say that, that it is, in fact, a precise tie between Roger de Coster of Belgium and Torsten Hallman, the world champion from Sweden. No sporting event could end up any closer than that. Quite a day in Simi Valley.